So thank you for watching our first video in windsurftoots.com. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is a very simple installation of a Windows 2008 R2 server. Um, basically this would be an installation as if you had a piece of media with your Windows Server 2008 install on it. You would put the media in the DVD drive and uh, boot from that DVD drive. Uh, you'll see here I'm actually working on a virtual machine so it'll probably go by a little bit faster. You might not even be able to see where it's booting from the DVD drive but if you do um, you will start to see Windows loading files and things like that. So let's get started. So as you can see, Windows is going to start loading up the files that it needs to uh, proceed with the install. It will go pretty quick. Um, it'll be even faster if you have a nice system with a good RAID array, uh, preferably uh, RAID 1 for mirroring is usually what an operating system is installed on, or uh, you can do RAID 5 if you are trying to increase performance. So uh, what you're going to see here, it's very similar if you have ever installed a Windows 7 client operating system or Windows Vista operating system. Um, it will start off, it has a very nice graphical user interface. You really only have to answer a couple of questions and then it will really kind of take care of itself. Uh, Microsoft has done a great job. So you can see here that it's going to ask you what languages you want to install. Um, the language here, the time and currency format, uh, what type of keyboard or input method you'd like. It's very simple questions and then install now. So it's going to start setting this up here. This will take just a moment. And you can see you have a couple different options. So there's Windows Server 2008 R2 Standard Edition. Um, there's the server core installation. There's Enterprise and Data Center. And each of these options are a little bit different. So the full installation for standard enterprise and data center is what people are probably going to be used to. It has the uh, GUI installed, Windows Explorer. Um, the server core installation is, is really kind of a great thing. Um, I'm a fan of it. And basically what it does is it, it doesn't have any um, GUI installed. So it's a lot less of an attack surface for an interface and it speeds up performance. You'll notice here that mandatory uh, activation there in the EULA. Um, so yes, you cannot just enter a CD key and be ready to go. You do have to either enter, um, I'm sorry, activate it online, or if you're a large enterprise, you can actually have an activation server. So here we're going to select our disk that we're going to be doing the install on. Just in this case, 24 gig disk. It's a virtual machine. And now uh, it's going to start copying the files. Um, this could take a moment, so I'll just try to give you a little bit of a rundown um, as we're going through this. There's some of the differences between uh, the standard version, the enterprise version, and uh, the data center version. So the minimum system requirements for a Windows Server 2008 R2 install you need a single processor with a 1.4 gigahertz um, rating or a 1.3 gigahertz dual core processor again that's the minimum system requirement uh, the minimum memory requirement is 512 megabytes of RAM obviously you would you'd want to make sure that you have much more of that now the maximum RAM for each installation type uh, for the standard server, the maximum amount of RAM that it will address is 8 gigabytes for the foundation um, or 32 gigabytes for standard. Foundation is kind of like a scaled back version. Most people, I don't really know a whole lot of people that use it. Um, when you get into the enterprise or data center versions of Windows Server 2008, then you can actually go up to 2 terabytes of RAM. 
That's a lot of memory. And usually those would be for things like very large enterprise SQL databases. Um, you would actually need, if you want to do clustering, you would actually need the enterprise version of Windows Server 2008 that is not available on the standard version. Um, or you could also obviously have um, clustering, failover clustering in the data center um, version of Windows Server 2008. So again, for the standard version of Windows Server 2008, you have a maximum memory size of 32 gigabytes. For the enterprise and data center version, you have two terabytes of maximum memory for those systems. The disk space requirements, you need at least 32 gigabytes or greater of disk space. Obviously, um, in reality, you're going to need much more than this. Uh, most displays will be fine, at least 800 by 600, higher resolution. Um, you want higher just to make your screen real estate a little bit better. And you, of course, you need your DVD, ROM drive, things of that nature. Now, you do have to remember, again, um, this is not like Windows 2000 where you could just put in your CD key and you could activate it that way. You do need, need to either activate your servers online or if you are an enterprise, you can actually have like an, um, a site license with Microsoft and you could go out and you could actually authenticate to um, a standalone win Windows server in your environment. If you don't want to sit and watch the expanding of these files, you can skip ahead to about 6 minutes and 15 seconds into the video. I tried to speed up this section um, so it's running at a 4 times speed, but if you want to just go ahead and skip through this, it's pretty boring, uh, skip to about 6 minutes and 15 seconds. And that will be right about where these expanding files and installing updates will finish up. Okay, so we are just finishing watching um, Windows expand. It's at about 96% of expanding the files. After it's done expanding, um, it will do some additional processes. You see it's only about two out of five steps done. So we're going to go through a couple of reboots here. It's going to finish installing the features. It's going to install whatever updates it can. And it will try to finish completing the, the installation. This is going to go through. Just about done installing these updates. Okay, so this should be the final, yep, this is the final update and final reboot. Um, and this you see set up as preparing your computer for first use, so that should be the last reboot that we had to go through. As you can see, overall it's a very, very easy install process. You just have to answer a couple of questions, and then really the install is going to take care of the rest. So you can see here that your password is going to be need. Um, need to be changed. This will be the administrator password for the system. So we recommend obviously you want to use a strong password, eight characters or more, a combination of numbers and letters, and uh, things like periods and the at symbol, just non alphanumeric characters. So, OK. 
okay we're gonna log on to the system here it's gonna prepare our desktop This is a little bit slower because this is a virtual machine. This is my test environment and here we go. So what you can see is this is a desktop very similar to what you're used to. A couple of different options. The biggest thing that's going to be different is you're going to notice the administrative tools will have some more options that is not really available with a normal desktop. And just kind of look through these here for a second. Server manager is something you'll be using frequently. We do have the initial configuration tasks, things like downloading and installing updates. You'll definitely want to change your full computer name. This is something different. Um, in previous versions of Windows, um, back in Windows 2000 days, you would have to enter in your computer name before you did the install, things like that. So just a couple differences. We'll have another video just to do some simple configuration on the server and some best practices after the actual software is installed. So please join us again. Thank you very much.